guys, Mr. Klein here, and I'm at the Old River Control Structure, smack dab in the middle of nowhere, Louisiana, at the confluence of the Mississippi Red and the Chafalaya Rivers. Now, right now, it's Memorial Day weekend, 2019, and if you're either right now, as soon as I release it, or in the future, you might have heard about what's going on right here. That heavy rain could lead to record levels. Both of these rivers are already in flood stage and a lot more is on the way. So in today's episode, we're going to get to the bottom of what the old river control structure is, how it's structured, everything that's here, how it works, and how the successful operation of this facility and the facility down the road we're going to look at is so important, not just for the state of Louisiana, but for the entire United States. Before we get to that, however, let's go ahead and see how I got over here. So, I'm now on Interstate 49, heading north of Lafayette, and we're heading on our way to the Old River Control Structure. This trip is about two hours, and once I get off of Interstate 49 right here, it's all super rural two-lane roads with nothing but farmland and cattle and trees as far as the eye can see. So before we actually get there, we need to define what Old River actually is. Old River is a small area of land where the Atchafalaya, Mississippi, and Red River of the South all meet. Now, contrary to popular belief, the Red River of the South actually does not directly flow into the Mississippi River. It actually flows directly into the Atchafalaya River. The term Old River refers to this channel in the South that was once a bend of the Mississippi River. As you'll see in the video, the Army Corps of Engineers cut this off and built control structures to the north side of the region to control the amount of water that was going from the Mississippi to the Atchafalaya. So now that you know where we're going, here's a quick science lesson about the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River controls about half of the drainage of the United States. The Missouri and the Ohio Rivers are the main um, influences on the size of it. Now north of St. Louis, the Mississippi River is actually pretty small by major river standards. In fact, in Minneapolis, the, uh, the depth of the river is only 12 feet, which it's 200 feet deep in New Orleans. But once you get south of Cairo, Illinois, so where the Ohio River meets the Mississippi River, the Mississippi River then becomes this old man river that you think about in terms of popular culture. And in the lower Mississippi River Valley, the river begins to flatten out because what happens is the elevation slowly starts flattening out. And as it does so, the Mississippi River flows between the valley walls. And what ends up happening from time to time is whenever you have major floods, the river will change its course. This is what we call an avulsion. And what ends up happening is the old river then goes down the new channel and what's left over becomes a remnant. It becomes like a smaller river. In fact, the Atchafalaya River, which this road I'm riding on right now is like literally next to the levee, is an example of one of these old rivers. This sometimes occurs on smaller scales in the Mississippi Delta region. That's the area of Mississippi from the Mississippi River on westward until the foothills of what ends up becoming the Appalachian Mountains form, and it goes all the way south to about Vicksburg. So if you look at this satellite footage of the Mississippi Delta region, you see all of these curves. Well, all of those curves were once the Mississippi River Channel over time. So what will happen is, even if there isn't a huge avulsion, what will happen is one of these meanders or these deep curves ends up getting cut off from the rest of the river. What That's a miniature avulsion, if you will, and it forms what we know it called as an oxbow lake and that's because the land starts flattening out when this occurs the river begins dumping its sediment as it reaches the Gulf of Mexico forming a Delta region this action by the Mississippi River is super important for us to understand Louisiana geography and geology because these two actions channel switching and Delta development created all the land between the two sides of the valley wall over the 6,000 years including where New Orleans sits today. However, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers developed the old river control structure as a way to stop a possible avulsion by controlling the flow between the Mississippi and a distributary that occupies a former channel known as the Atchafalaya River. If this avulsion would occur, the current channel of the Mississippi River would become something like the Atchafalaya is now. 
a reasonably sized river, but with extreme consequences for not just southern Louisiana. New Orleans would completely lose its fresh water supply as saltwater intrusion from the Gulf of Mexico wouldn't be held back by the Mississippi River anymore. As a result, the city might actually have to be abandoned because of the lack of fresh water for the residents. All of the petrochemical plants between Baton Rouge and New Orleans would be in serious trouble because they would lose their access to the Mississippi River. And they use this as a way to cool the chemical processes and the machinery that they use in their plants. In addition, the entire ports facilities between Baton Rouge and New Orleans, which combine is the largest in the United States by a wide margin, would be shut down. In addition, roads and train tracks would be lost, as would the gas and oil pipelines that all cross the Atchafalaya Basin. And these gas and oil pipelines begin in Houston and Louisiana and move all the way up to the Northeast, like New York City, Boston. And needless to say that this would be extreme trouble for the entire United States. What's known as the Old River Control Structure actually consists of two separate structures that are next to each other. The first is right here, and that's what's known as the Low Sill Structure. This was declared operational in 1964. The low sill structure limits the amount of water flowing into the Atchafalaya from the Mississippi River at a constant rate. The structure spans a 175 meter channel and remains open throughout the entire year. So just up the road, maybe about two or three football fields from the low sill structure is this. This is the overbank structure, which was another of the original parts of Old River Control. The overbank structure is a one kilometer long floodgate that the Corps of Engineers opens at times of high water like this in order to allow more water to flow through in order to reduce pressure to the other structures in the area. So when the Mississippi River reaches the structure, it simply flows through the floodgates with a modest flow of water, which is about 85 cubic meters per second. It's fairly rare to open to this structure. This is actually only the 15th time in 2019 that it's been opened since it first became operational in 1964. During the 1973 Mississippi River flood, it was the first major flood that the low sill structure was put under stress. This area right here was actually eroded away by the Mississippi River as the channel moved through this way. A 15 meter deep hole was created and it only took emergency repairs actually on this spot where I'm standing in order to keep the low sill structure from failing. After doing the emergency repairs, the Army Corps of Engineers figured that the low sill structure couldn't work at its current capacity, or rather its design capacity, any further. The result of which is that they built this structure further down the road, and that's the place we're going to look at next. This is the auxiliary structure. And in the design and construction of this structure, the Army Corps of Engineers took all of the lessons they learned from this partial failure of the low sill structure and put into place over there. The auxiliary structure restored the ability of this entire complex to keep the division of the flow of water at a set level between the Mississippi and Atchafalaya rivers. In addition to this, by being the second control structure, this added an important redundancy, meaning that either this structure or the low sill structure could be closed for repairs, like what happened to the low sill structure in the 1980s. The auxiliary structure right here was opened in 1986 at a cost of $500 million. It's about 135 meters wide, uh, and it only has six gates instead of the original ones at the low sill. However, it's bigger, and as a result, because these gates are bigger, it allows more water to go through each of them, which reduces the turbulence from the Mississippi River, which is out this way, heading this way toward the Atchafalaya. This is the back side of the auxiliary structure right here. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of riprap that's like huge chunks of limestone and rocks, and that's there to control erosion. It's there for a couple of reasons. The first is that the channel that the auxiliary structure flows, the water flows through to the auxiliary structure, is much longer from the Mississippi toward the Atchafalaya than the low sill structure. The second is a consequence of this channel being cut. Before the channel, this area behind me, and you can see the low sill structure back here, was all a part of the mainland, the part of Louisiana, if you will. However, it's now an island, and the result of this is that the Corps of Engineers has to be super careful to watch out for erosion in this region. The reason being is that if this island area erodes, it becomes an extreme danger for the Mississippi River to undermine the levee on the other side and just flow right through. So these are the main Army Corps of Engineer control structures. There's one more control structure that's past the overbank structure just a little bit, and that is one of the only two hydroelectric power plants in the state of Louisiana. 
This right here is the Sydney A. Murray Jr. Hydroelectric Power Station. In fact, I'm kind of standing behind the structure right here. This is the final structure that we were talking about with Old River Control in this region. It was the last to be built. It was opened in 1990. It was the brainchild of the mayor of Vidalia, Louisiana, you guess it, Sydney A. Murray, who saw that the elevation difference between the Mississippi and the Atchafalaya was enough that perhaps they could generate electricity through hydropower. The Army Corps of Engineers agreed and construction began. What actually happened with this power station is that it was built in one piece and brought up the river from New Orleans and put in place. It's the world's largest prefabricated power station. Now, it generates power for Vidalia and the surrounding area. It's no Hoover Dam, but it also serves as part of the way that the Mississippi River gets diverted to the Atchafalaya. Structures like this allow pressure to be taken off of the low sill structure and even the overbank in places like that because the river is flowing right through. So I'm leaving the old river area, but before I go, there's a couple other areas that I want to show you that complete the Army Corps of Engineers work in the region. Before the Army Corps of Engineers built all these structures we looked at in the 1950s, the Mississippi and Atchafalaya rivers were connected through a channel called, you guessed it, Old River. In order to force the Mississippi through the control structures, this dam that I'm crossing over right now was built to stop Old River. However, there still needed to be a lock built in order to allow boat traffic to travel from the Mississippi to the Atchafalaya rivers because as you see, all the other river structures don't allow boat traffic. And that's what I'm crossing right now. As you can tell, the locks aren't really built for heavy barge traffic. The lock itself is pretty small. The need for large barge traffic was taken care of by the Port Allen locks, which are just south of the Mississippi River Bridge whenever you're crossing eastbound on Interstate 10. So there you go, a fairly complete tour of the Old River region. We looked at the control structures and all of the operations that go to keep the Mississippi and Atchafalaya River in balance in order to keep the Mississippi River flowing toward New Orleans. This is the first of a series of videos I'm going to be doing in the summer of 2019 about this region and the flow of the Mississippi River through lenses of history and in science. In our next video, we're going to look at another flood control structure downstream of here, which you might be hearing about in the news, which is called the Morganza Spillway. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. And also, if you're interested in watching more content like this, make sure you click on not only the subscribe icon, but also the notifications. That's the bell to be informed of when new content comes out. So in addition to these videos on science and history and how they impact the state of Louisiana, I also have a series of videos made specifically for middle school science that's based on not just the Louisiana student standards for science, but also the next generation science standards. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below, and thanks for watching.